beautiful morning, afternoon, or evening to you, depending on where it is you are listening from. Welcome to Africa Today News New York Weekly News Roundup. My name is Favor Aham, and these are the stories that made talking points for us in the past week that just ended. On Monday, we reported that Chelsea's new owner, Todd Boyley, pledged to build on the team's remarkable history of success after the American completed his takeover of the Premier League club. On the same day, we brought to you the report that no fewer than two dozen Afghan women hit the streets chanting bread, work, freedom as they protested in the capital against the Taliban's harsh restrictions on their rights. On Tuesday, we informed you that after prolonged negotiations and final analysis by external bodies, the European Union, EU, has finally agreed on a partial ban on Russian oil imports amid the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Still on Tuesday, we reported that Africa Today News New York, a subsidiary of People and Policy Incorporated New York, unveiled new brand strategies as part of their team or media influencers, including the fast-rising comedian, MC, and author, MC Jalof, who will be in charge of the media brand strategy. On the same day, we reported that the presidential candidate of the new Nigerian People's Party, and NPP, Rabiu Kwankwasu, revealed that the former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, could have been his running mate if he didn't become the presidential candidate of Labour Party. On Wednesday, we reported that a U.S. jury found both Johnny Depp and his ex-wife Amber Heard liable for defamation, but sided more strongly with the Pirates of the Caribbean star following an intense trial riding on bitterly contested allegations of domestic abuse. Still on Wednesday, we brought you the report that President Mohamed Buhari in Madrid, Spain, signed at least nine agreements and memoranda of understanding with the Spanish government. The agreements included a treaty on mutual legal assistance in criminal matters, transfer of sentenced persons, extradition, economic and commercial cooperation, and tourism. On Thursday, we reported that Brazilian football legend Pele called on President Vladimir Putin to end his country's invasion of Ukraine, which has attracted widespread condemnation from several world leaders. On the same day, we reported that the Lagos state government commenced the enforcement of its ban on commercial motorcycles, also known as ACADA, in about six local government areas of the state. On Friday, we brought you the report that former Nigeria Senate President Bukola Saraki reiterated that he acted in the national interest when he opposed the plan to foist a Muslim-Muslim presidency on Nigeria in 2014. He said this in response to recent claims by the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu. On the same day, we reported that prominent Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi had urged the federal government to treat Fulani Heras and other aggrieved groups as Niger Delta militants. And finally, on Saturday, we informed you that the President of the United States, Joe Biden, made a fervent appeal for lawmakers to pass tougher gun control laws, including a ban on assault weapons, to cover scourge of mass shootings, turning American communities into killing fields. And that's been it for the weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Favor Aham. Thank you for watching.